we knew that this was unique. Traditionally, the strategic national stockpile plan and the thing that we exercise for the most is actually anthrax response. Um, it's primarily, a, it's traditionally been a bioterrorism response program um, with the idea that we would always have to uh, respond to pandemics, but typically we were always planning for influenza, which has a medical countermeasure. We have Tamiflu and vaccines for that. Um, additionally, we had never planned for a pandemic in the middle of a supply chain break. So we were already weeks behind a supply chain break when we activated. So most of our facilities and our EMS services were already mitigating PPE and already didn't have enough for the surge that was coming. You gotta have it before you can send it. And that has been uh, at times uh, one of our biggest challenges is getting those things to be able to send them. The magnitude of this, the supply chain, all that all together has caused um, a lot of strain. Um, I think this is probably the first time this has ever been done. So we kind of had to, uh, we had to invent a lot of these processes. Uh, but initially, everybody in the state of Georgia needed PPE. So we had a set amount of PPE. We had to figure out how to best distribute this small amount of PPE to the places that need it most. Incidents aren't going away. It takes a team to manage. It's better to manage them with a team than an individual. And I knew in order to get that warehouse together, we had to get people that knew how to run a warehouse based on their hurricane experience. With this incident, it gives us an ability to manage that process and getting the supplies out. Because if you didn't have this team here, who knows how those part products will get out. It is organized. And that way we can track what goes out and try to make sure they get the right things. That's all we can do. So basically how it goes is for the DPH side, you're going to have hospitals and healthcare facilities, EMS, the whole nine yards. They're going to submit a ready app request through our, our link. And that's going to go through our allocation process. Um, once we get that back from allocation, we're going to process the, the request in DPH WebEOC or GMS WebEOC. So you're going to have the requester. You're going to have the point of contacts. Um, you're going to have all the supplies that are actually in the request. Normally, WebEOC runs for single resources. So you track it like a tractor and a truck or a driver. Uh, in this instance, we're actually tracking a load of PPE. Initially, we started out uh, looking at the areas that were real hot spots. There were a high number of cases. COVID-19 was spreading pretty rapidly. And then it got to the point that we could not adhere to those parameters anymore because it was widespread across the state. So then we try to match up the organization with the appropriate type of PPE because a hospital's needs are much different than home health or EMS, fire, things like that. There's a, there's a lot going on. Um, a lot of agencies are involved. Uh, we're utilizing uh, several other agencies for uh, transport assets. So we're, um, we're working with George Forestry Commission to ma basically manage and handle all the operations in the warehouse, you know, working with the Department of Public Health, uh, identifying products, packaging, and getting things shipped out the door. And then they're also helping coordinating the piece of transportation where we're setting up as a logistics branch, um, the transportation assets that we have, they're helping facilitate that uh, handoff from warehouse to the transport. We check everyone's temperature at the beginning of the shift, so basically no one can go to work until they've had their temperature verified. And then at the end of the shift, I actually, uh, I check it right about dinner time and, and making sure that no one is above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. We're not allowing anybody in the kitchen when the meals are served. We actually have someone standing out and handing people meals to prevent basically, you know, the six feet contact rule and 
So it's, it's great to know that everybody is here together making sure that we stay healthy so we can take care of the citizens of Georgia. Everything that comes through this warehouse and distributes to the state includes uh, personal protective equipment, which is our gowns, N95s, KN95, surgical masks. In these KN95s, they are manufactured in China, and this is a new product to us. We've never really had our hands on these types of masks, so seeing where these masks can be played into the clinical setting, whether they could be used or not. And then um, all specimen collection kits are distributed through this distribution site through our to district public health SPOCs or specimen points of collection. Test kits are a prime example of as they come in the door and within 12 hours they are back out and sometimes even at the sites already within 12 hours. And then we additionally uh, process and distribute all ventilator requests to hospitals across the state. It's not just a one size fits all kind of thing like uh, normal PPE is. It's not like you're putting on a pair of gloves. Um, it's, it takes a lot more to determine the needs for the uh, ventilators, but that's um, the biggest of the medical equipment that we're sending out. This is obviously a very sensitive, uh, you know, sensitive amount of items we're giving out uh, and being receiving and all that kind of stuff. And also there's a, a blend of several agencies. So we're providing security uh, to prevent unauthorized personnel to come in. We have had a tiered process that has um, designated priority groups along the way. Um, it has been very fluid depending upon the day and the amount of supplies on hand. Sometimes we're able to be, I would consider, pretty generous and some days we have hardly anything to spread across a, 159 counties. And it's actually, it, it's distressing to our group that we're unable to meet the needs that everybody is asking for. Basically how the shipping process works now, this is kind of our zone staging area that we have here where we also do receiving. Um, this here is our picking area. Uh, when resource requests process through, they end up uh, coming out on a ticket and the, uh, the team here will end up taking that ticket, take a look at what the order is, where it's going, everything like that and they will go through the inventory that we have here to fill that order, palletize it like you see here, and they will um, then verify, prepare all the paperwork for the shipping process, and uh, prep it to go out the door um, on its next uh, shipment day. Nothing sits in that warehouse. Uh, we've got an allocation team that comes in three times a week doing the allocations. As soon as we get uh, product and supplies and inventory in, it's pretty much ready to be repackaged, repalleted, and shipped back out within 24 to 48 hours. In the face of the difficulty, in face of the lack of supplies, the team here and the process in this warehouse gave 100% every single day, seven days a week. There is not one of them out there that this would work as well if we did not have them. Absolutely. Every single person equally matters out there. Warehouse, operations, it works because everybody came forward and um, contributed their thoughts and their ideas and their desire to meet the mission. We have really seen um, the strength of Georgia and how the different organizations have been able to come together to meet the needs of Georgians. And, and I think it's very impressive. I'm a fifth generation Georgian, so it's very, very important to me to make sure that we're safe and that we're healthy. We're saving lives. Hopefully there'll never be another coronavirus incident, but the few that are here, they would, they would give their life for it.